All right, so today we're going to kick off the um, hard surface modeling part of it. We're moving beyond low poly into higher poly. Um, this is what we're going to be trying to recreate in Blender. Um, we're going to be using a process called subdivision surface modeling, um, which is basically modeling like low poly with as few vertices, edges, faces as possible and then um, using a subdivision surface modifier to kind of smooth everything out and get it where we want it. Uh, we'll try to take it relatively slow. There's not going to be any new tools here. Um, it's just going to be applying the tools that we already have in a kind of organized process. We're also going to be focusing on very intentional edge and face placement so that we have the most control to modify uh, the model as we go. So we've got three um, reference images. These are from a, uh, a collection called Dr. Gordbort. You can see the file name up here. Uh, and this is something from Weta uh, Workshop, which is the effects house that did all the Lord of the Rings stuff. From, um, they make a bunch of really cool stuff, but there's a, they sell a bunch of ray guns, and so I grabbed one of those, and that's what we're using as reference. Obviously, they do not endorse this by any means, but we're students, or your students. I'm an educator. I get to use it under copyright, whatever have you. Um, so that's where we're going, and uh, let's get started. So we need to start with a new scene. Uh, this, by the way, is just where we're going to get to, hopefully, today. Um, and then we'll continue embellishing next week with details. But we need a new scene, new general. Uh, I'm going to not save that because I don't need to. And I'm going to select everything that's in the scene by default and delete it. Just hit delete. Uh, and I want to start with the reference images. So, uh, in Blender, I'm going to go into front view. So when we add these reference images or background images, they're going to be added to the view plane uh, that we're looking. Reference images are for the front and the back. So we want to be in the front view when we add them. Uh, all right, so in the front view, one on the number pad, I'm going to right click and uh, I'm not going to right click. Sorry, that's wrong. Shift A, uh, add image, and we have reference and background. And they're basically the same thing with just different presets, but you can change them into the either one. So it um, doesn't really matter, but we will go with uh, background image. And then it's going to bring up this, and we're going to navigate to where we saved our, back, our, our reference images. So in my case, it's in a Raygun folder, and I have a reference folder, and I'm going to start with four, uh, which is the front view. Uh, and I'm going to load background image. And so this is what happens. Um, we are going to not worry about scale, but if we go to our options over here, our object data properties, all right, now we have some some options that we can control. Uh, oh, also, before we forget, we want to name this. So we're going to call this um, ref underscore front. If you're going to have multiple um, images, I might do like ref ray gun front, be very descriptive. We're only going to have one object that we're modeling, so we don't need to be that specific. But it's not bad practice to be very clear and deliberate in your naming conventions. Uh, and then let's look at what we have. So we have display as image, which is what we're doing. Basically, it's just an, an empty that we are using an image to display. Um, offset is how we can move it around. And we're not going to move it around just yet. We will in a moment, but uh, not just yet. And then we have this depth and side. Um, and so depth is, if I just add a, I'll just add a cube um, as an example. And... I'm going to move it forward. All right, I'm going to select my ray gun. Uh, real quick, I need to turn on display perspective so that I can see it when I'm in perspective view. But so this depth is where does the reference image sit? So right now it's going to be behind everything. So if the cube is in front, obviously that, that reference image is going to be in, in the back. That makes sense. But because it's a reference image or a background image, I can move the cube behind it. Right? You can see it is behind it but it still looks like it's in front. Okay, so that's kind of a, a handy thing when you're when you're modeling. Um, you can turn that on or off just by 
uh, so setting front or back, All right? Or you can do default. Um, but we will keep it on back. And then side is what side is it visible from? So from the front side, it's the image is visible. If I go to back, it's invisible from the front and visible from the back. And then obviously both, you can see it from both sides. Okay. Now, because this gun is, is not symmetrical on both sides, like there's different details on the other side, we're just going to keep it on front for now. Um, and that's... Uh, the last thing is, kind of jumping back up here, we have this use alpha, so we're going to turn that on, and I'm going to set the transparency to like 0.6 or whatever, or whatever. 0.6 is what I'm setting it to. Um, you can adjust that as is as, as comfortable for you, uh, but that's where I'll keep it, at least for now, until it bothers me and I change it. Uh, and that's how you set up uh, background images. You can uh, rotate these. You can scale them. Right? You can you see if you hover over it, you've got these corners that you can adjust, and that'll scale it evenly, uniformly. Um, I'm not going to worry about any of that. Okay. So I've got that. Um, let's go ahead and add the second background image now. So I'm going to uh, shift right whoops, shift A, add another image, and we can go background is again. I'm going to choose five, which if we go here, we can view this as thumbnails. Um, again, that's right up here. So you can see what, what it is you're selecting if you don't know the file name by heart. Um, and load the background image. And you can see it, it added it in a different spot, which I don't want. So I'm going to hit shift C to center my 3D cursor. And then I'm going to go to object, um, actually no, shift S and snap the selection to the cursor. It's going to snap it back to the center. The, um, the images will get added wherever your 3D cursor is. So make sure your, your cursor is where you want it. Uh, now I'm going to turn on use alpha. And this time we want it to be visible from the back, not the front. Okay. And then we also want the depth to be back should be good. Oh, and display perspective. Okay. So now from the back side we can see it, and from the front side, this is what you get. Um, but what we another thing that's important is to make sure that these line up, so that when you're modeling from the back, you're not modeling in a different spot relative to the front. So just for now, I'm going to turn side to both. Um, actually, I'm going to grab the... Oh, let's rename it before we forget. So ref ray gun back. Cool. Uh, I'm going to grab the front one and set that to, to both. And let's see if we can get this lined up right. Set our alpha down so we can see both. Minor mistake here. And that's when I added the back image. I added it from the wrong perspective. Um, that's why they're not matching up. It's because I'm a fool. So I'm going to select the back image and hit delete. And here's where I went wrong. So I added it from the front view, uh, which made it point the opposite way. I want to add it from the back view. So if you hit control one, control one on the number pad, should be specific, you'll go to the back view. Uh, you can also, if you hit the tilde key, which is the key right above the left tab or tab, um, you can go to the, the back view right there. Okay. Um, and then from there, you want to add your background image. I can load that. We'll rename that again. So ref raygun back. Uh, a reminder that for your projects I will be grading uh, naming, so if you're not naming things you're going to lose points. So just get in the habit. It's easier to do it while as you're adding objects than it is to go back at the end and add them all. So uh, in the preferences we want to display perspective and we will use alpha. We'll bring that down and we want to line this up as best we can. So I'm going to hit G and kind of move it around and, and get it 
to snap as, as good as it can. It looks like it's snapping a little bit on its own. I don't know why that's happening. Um, you'll also notice that this is rotated a little bit. So I'm going to rotate it and move it. Try to get as close as possible. It's okay if it's not perfect, uh, but you know we can we can do the best we can. I will actually maybe scale this down a little bit. Um, you will find with any photographic reference, it will never line up perfectly. It's just a fact that they will never be perfect. Um, but that's pretty close. And then kind of as we're going, it'll be important to just make a mental note of which side is going to be the kind of primary reference image. So when you need to kind of line something up, figure out which side is going to be the important one to, to match. So for us, that'll be the front. Um, but we still want this to be relatively close. Once we have that, then uh, we should be good. I'm going to grab this front reference image and set that back to... Uh, front so I can only see the front from the front side and I can only see the back from the back side that's pretty good I'm gonna go back into front view uh, and I want to also to make the modeling easier I want this to be level so if we go from the, the tip at the front to the tip at the back I want that to be a straight line uh, so I'm gonna select both reference images at the same time and I'm going to move them, one, so that they're right on this x-axis line. And then I'm going to rotate them so that they are lined up. Okay. And I'm just going to get them close. It doesn't have to be, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, as close as we can get them. So if you're following along, my rotation uh, around the y-axis is 1.94 degrees, uh, or 1.94215. But 1.954 will be plenty close enough. All right. So now that we have them in place, um, there's one last thing that I'm going to do. Well, I'm going to hit end to hide that. Uh, up in our outliner, we have this little funnel or filter icon. I want to turn on uh, both this camera icon, which is going to be the render uh, visibility, and this little arrow icon, which is going to be selectable. And uh, I want to make them both unselectable. A bit of housekeeping before we start adding objects into our scene is I'm just going to rename this collection in the outliner to ref. Okay, so if I want to turn off all the reference, I can just uncheck that box and it'll just hide all the reference. Um, so yeah, I, I made these unselectable so that as I'm manipulating objects or I do a, a, like a click and drag, it doesn't select the background and it just doesn't get in the way. They're there, they're where I want them, and this will make it harder for me to accidentally move them. Uh, so I can, uh, yeah, I'll just leave that there and I think we're ready to start adding some objects. So uh, we're gonna start with just blocking in most of the main components. I'm not gonna worry about any of these little kind of fiddly bits and, and tubes and things that run all over. Uh, we'll get to those later, but I want to focus on the main forms. So we have, we've got this big old form. This grease pencil is not really helping me too much here. Let's see if I can, can I change the size of this maybe? Maybe not. I'm sure there's a way. I'm just not familiar with the new grease pencil. Um, so we'll start with that main form. We will, this will be a pretty easy thing to block in. Um, you know, this is going to be a pretty easy thing. And this fin here. And then we'll get into this piece here, which is a little bit complicated. But I think I can make it relatively understandable from there. If we have time, then we'll get into, like, that little add-on, this little add-on. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, we'll, there'll be plenty here. So we'll get as far as we can. Um, but I want to focus on just this main body section first. Uh, with primitives and for this main body we're going to start with a cylinder. A um, couple things to note about the cylinder. One, we want to make sure that we change the default values. Um, the other thing is we will need to pay special attention to the ends of the cylinder uh, and I will illustrate why really quickly. 
if I just add a default cylinder, and then if I add a subsurface modifier, which we will eventually be doing, we get this weirdness. And if I shade smooth, this is obviously not what a cylinder is supposed to look like. Um, and the reason this happens is because we have this uh, giant N-gon here at the top. So if I just hide that. Okay, so this is just one face with 32 sides. Um, so that's not great. If instead I add a cylinder and set it to uh, triangle fan fill. Okay, now we have that. Still, if I add that subsurface modifier, I get... Shade smooth. I still get the same thing. Okay, so we're gonna need to pay attention to these end caps um, as we're going. But I just wanted to kind of show you before the scene got too complicated. One of the reasons why we have to do that, um, and this is the type of thing that that'll pop up in um, a number of different shapes and forms. So when I do put edges in a, in a particular place, this is the type of reason why. All right, so let's get rid of this stupid thing. Go into front view. Um, we're going to spend a lot of time in front view, okay, so that's one on the number pad. Um, if you're in front view and you see something like this with the perspective, see it says front perspective, hit 5 on the number pad and that'll jump you to orthographic view. Um, so for this, for lining things up, we're going to keep it in orthographic for now. And then when we orbit around, it should jump to perspective. Again, if it, if it jumps to orthographic view, you can just hit 5 on the number pad. So front view, orthographic, the cursor is centered. And I'm going to hit Shift A, and I'm going to add in a cylinder. Um, so before we do any adjustments to this, we need to set these initial values uh, because we can't do it after the fact. So for vertices, we don't have to go too complicated. Um, we could probably get away with 8, but I'm going to go a little bit higher. I'm going to go with 12. And then uh, I'm going to set the cat fill type to Ngon, and then we will address that um, in a moment. And then for rotation, we can we can rotate now or we can do it later, um, but we're going to rotate around the y-axis 90 degrees. Okay, so it's horizontal. Um, and then if we wanted to, we could get the, the radius pretty close. This isn't super important because we're going to make all these changes here shortly, but we'll go like there. Okay. So once we're, we're pretty happy, uh, we need to name it. And this is going to be ray gun body. And in the viewport, I'm going to hit M, which is going to bring up my move to collection menu. I'm going to say new collection. And I'm going to call this ray gun. So all these parts are going to be in one collection. Uh, also in this viewport, I'm going to click on the ray gun collection. And then you'll see the little like file box here is going to have this subtle highlight on it. That's going to make that the active collection. And what that means is that whenever I add a new object, it's going to by default go into that collection. Um, so if you're ever wondering why something is always going into one collection, it's because it's the active one because it's highlighted. Um, so if you don't do it now, then just every object you add, you'd have to select hit M and move it to that collection. So. Either way works, again, but this is kind of the easiest way to, to start. Uh, so now we're going to go into edit mode, so tab, to go into edit mode. And I'm going to go into uh, wireframe, okay, so I can see my reference and line things up. And I want to first start with just kind of the extremes. I'm going to ignore the little antenna E bits for now. Uh, I just want to worry about this main form. So I'm going to... G to move, to move, and then X to constrain it to the X axis. I'm going to be doing that a lot, and I'm going to scale this down to right about there. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the back side, uh, and we'll G and X, and we'll move it to there. Okay, this view does get a little bit grainy, so there's a little bit of uh, kind of in interpretation involved in lining this up. But I'm going to get that close, and I'm going to scale it down. Now, the way we're going to be working with, with so few vertices and edges, making changes after the fact is going to be pretty easy. Um, that's actually going to be part of the process. Is we're going to block everything in, 
then we'll kind of adjust sizes and scales and positions, and then we'll start adding details. So this isn't set in stone by any means. We're just trying to get it close, start representing the shape. Um, and then from there, I'm going to add in an edge loop, so control R, and then we use a scroll wheel to move it up, and we'll do three for now. And I'm gonna start with this one. And I'm just left click and dragging across to select them all. Uh, as long as up here you have the select box mode uh, enabled, you can hit uh, W on the keyboard to cycle through those options. Um, I'm just gonna select all of those and GX to move it. Again, I'm just constraining it on the X axis and then I'm gonna scale that up. I just wanna line it up with the seam. You know, you'll notice the reference image. I can line it up in the center here, and then it doesn't line up at the ends. Um, that's okay. Just pick one. Doesn't matter which one. Uh, I'll line it up with the top. So we'll go like right there, and that's good for that. Uh, and I'm paying attention to how this line matches the rest of the form, and that'll tell me if I need to add more edge loops to define those shapes. Uh, I'm going to grab this front one now and GX. I'm constraining it on the X axis because I want to keep the center in line with everything else. Uh, it's going to make, it just makes everything easier and uh, smoother. And I'll scale it up to about there. Okay. And then this middle one, let's scale that up. Uh, now it looks like I'm only scaling it vertically, but if you orbit the view around, you'll notice that things are staying circular because I am scaling in all directions. Okay. So just because it doesn't look like it, it is still happening that way. Um, and you can see we're getting close, but we're not quite there yet. So I'm going to add an edge loop here. So I'm going to control R and left click to add one. And then I'm going to right click to keep it in the center. I'll scale that up. And I want to go at the peak of this curve. So it actually looks like I need to move it over GX, move it over a little bit. We'll say there should be good. Uh, and then as we kind of add some more detail here, I'm going to add one here for that peak. And that should be pretty good, I think. I'm not going to worry about the fins right now. Uh, this looks good. It's lining up nicely. And then through here, I'm going to add one more like right here, and scale that up a little bit too. Okay, so that's what I have for edge loops. Um, I'll select my front reference image here. And just so you guys can kind of see what's going on a little bit better, I'll get out of, out of um, edit mode. Select that, there we go. And I'm just going to turn my transparency down so you can kind of... I don't know if that helps you see or not. But that's kind of what I have right now. Uh, so we're going to leave the body there for now. And we will move on to... Uh, let's do this big fin bit. So I'm going to go back into object mode with tab. And for this big fin... Oh, let me also turn off that. Actually, before I do that, I'll set my transparency back up. We'll go like 0.5. Okay, so for this fin, uh, I think we're going to start with a just a plane. So I'm going to shift right click to place my 3D cursor vaguely in the area. And then shift A, add mesh plane. Okay. And then I'll tab into edit mode. R to rotate, X to constrain to the X axis, and 90. So it's standing up. Okay, and we can start moving it into position. Again, keeping with the principle of, of trying to use as few as uh, vertices as possible. I'm going to first scale it down. And now I'm going to start moving vertices around individually. So I'm going to grab this one, and I'm going to move it to the base here. And I'm going to grab this one. But with I'm just hitting G to move it. And because I'm doing this in the front orthographic view, you can see from the side, we've hit three to go to the side view. It's all staying in a line, right? It's, it's all staying lined up. So I don't have to worry about that. I'm just worrying about the form from this side for now, because this is just a flat piece 
of metal. Like we can refer to our uh, reference images here. And you can see if we ignore all of the other junk that's on it, it's just one flat piece of metal. Okay, so it's, it's a relatively simple thing, um, but there's a couple of tricks that we need to pay attention to. So I'm going to grab uh, these vertices. I'm left clicking and, and dragging across to select the vertices. You can also just left click on them. Um, it's just kind of a habit for me to do it this way. I don't. There's something that's kind of been ingrained in me as we go. Um, so we want to define this curve first. And I'm going to put this one right about here. And I'm going to put this one right about here. All right. And I need a little bit, a couple more edge loops so that I can get this curve established, especially on this side. So I'm going to add. Looks like four, but I can probably get it done with three. I can probably get it done with two, actually. So we'll start with two, and if we need to add more, we'll add more. So I'll start on this side, and just kind of zoom in. Uh, make sure that you are working, you know, zoomed in here. You don't, there's no point in trying to push things around from way back here. Get in there, get close. It's not gonna bite you. And I'm just gonna line them up. I wanted to try to keep them evenly spaced. All right. Same thing on this side. I'll move that there. We're going to move this one down about here. And this one will move up there. Okay. Uh, and now, I, I don't want these super long faces. So I'm going to add two more edge loops. Right there. And then I'm just going to right click to keep them centered and evenly spaced. Okay. Uh, and then from here, we need to, we're going to need a little bit more detail here. And I could add two edge loops here. Um, but I don't need all of that information, all these edges going all the way down. Um, that's just more than is necessary. So I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to select this face only. I'm going to hit I to inset it about that much. Okay. So this is working. We're going to keep all quads, all four-sided faces. Um, but if I do this and then delete this front face, this left face, now I have a couple of extra vertices here that I can move around and get that shape. Okay. So that's going to help me define that. Uh, and then I can also select these, and I'm going to hit. I'm going to double tap G, and it's going to let me slide them. I'm going to slide them down just to even things out again. Same thing with this. I'm going to uh, I'm going to be sliding vertices around a lot. And so what sliding does is it will lock it to the edges that are there. So if I want to keep this in a straight line, I can double tap G and it'll slide it left and right or I can slide it down. Um, but that way it'll keep that edge in the right position but allow me to move the vertex around. If you don't want to use the key command for whatever reason, you can just right click and slide vertice. Okay, you can also see Shift V is another shortcut for it, um, but for me the easiest is just double tap G. It's real fast. Um, so like I'll double tap G and, and just kind of keep these smooth. I don't want too many sharp angles here uh, as we go. Okay, so that should be pretty good. Uh, so now we can continue moving up. As we go, so I'm going to select uh, in edge mode. So two on the on the keyboard uh, should be your left hand should be hitting the two. So not the number pad, the other two. To go into edge select mode, you can also just click up here on the top left. So I'm going to select these three edges, and then E to extrude, and I'm going to extrude them up, and then I'm going to rotate them a little bit to line it up. Okay, and then I'll go into vertex select, select this one vertex and move it over. I can select this one now and double tap D. Well, actually I'll just move it right there. Again, just trying to keep these relatively relatively even. Like that. Um, if you ever get like one vertex that's just way out of line and you want to get this back to even, uh, what you can do is you can slide it all the way one direction and then double tap G again and slide it back. Whoops, 
There you go. Slide it back, and then it'll kind of fall in line. Just a little handy shortcut that I use quite a bit to keep things even. So a lot of this kind of process is establishing the geometry and then spending a minute to smooth things out and make it look prettier. Right, a, a smooth and even mesh is a happy mesh. Uh, all right, so now we can take this leading edge here, right, and I'm going to extrude that out, and I'm going to go to about here. Wait, no, why would I do that? I'm going to go all the way to here. So all the way to the end, and then this I'm going to put... You might be tempted to put it down here, but you can see we're going to need some more geometry. So I'm going to go to about here, right to the base of this red line. Okay. And then from there, we can add a couple of edge loops. I'm going to start with just one. this bottom vertex down. Actually, I want to move this one down, too. Yeah, that's better. So we're about there, about to the midpoint. We'll add another one. Down to about here. You see that this line is now following the edge that we want. So we're probably pretty good in that regard. Uh, but we need... We're going to need to add some edge loops so that we can make this shape a little bit later. Be too much about the detail right now, so I think I'm just going to leave this here. Oh, I, actually, there's one more thing that we need to do, um, and that's right now. If we go into like solid view, you can see that it's just a plane still. So we need to make it not a plane. So in edit mode, I'm going to move it. So I'm going to hit A to select everything and three to go into side view and I'm going to go G and Y to lock it there and I'm gonna move it a little like if I hold down control it'll temporarily turn on snapping so I'm gonna go to negative point zero four if you look in the top left of the screen right here you can see the value All right so if I hold down control and it's basically four little squares and that'll work. And then because this is symmetrical, uh, we can use a mirror modifier. So I'm going to go to the wrench for the modifiers, add a mirror modifier. By default, it adds it in the X direction, so we need to turn off X, turn on Y, and then we want to turn on clipping. Once we have all of those set, then we can just minimize that. And then I'm going to go to edge mode, and I'm going to select all the border edges here. Okay, uh, and that's if you alt left click, it will select an edge loop. And then you can add shift to that, so shift alt left click, and then you can select more border edges. Okay, so I've got all of these edges selected, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit E to extrude them, and Y to limit it to that Y axis, and I'm just going to push them in towards the center, and because I have clipping on in my uh, mirror modifier, it's going to get to the center and stop. So I'm going to left click once it's in the center, and that's all I'm going to do on this for now. Uh, moving on, I'm going to go back into front view. Um, let's do... We can do this top capsule real quick. So I'm going to shift right click to my 3D cursor there. Um, I'm also just, if I hit N to bring up my view options or properties, um, you can see this in the view tab, this is 3D cursor. I want to make sure this Y value is zero so that my 3D cursor is in the center of my scene. That way any object that I add stays in the center. Okay, so front view. And uh, I'll hide that. I'm going to add in another cylinder. Okay. I'm going to set the vertices to six. Well, we'll do eight. Again, we could probably get away with six, but I'll, I'll do eight. Um, and that's it. So then I'm going to 
go into edit mode. Tab to go into edit mode. Rotate around the Y axis, so R, Y, and then 90 degrees. I'm going to wireframe here, and I'll scale that down. I'll do that wireframe thing again really quickly, um, or slower, so that you can actually see what I did. So you can tap Z to bring up your um, display or your shading options. So wireframe, solid, preview, and rendered. I'm just going to worry about wireframe and solid. So you can tap Z and then move over and click on it. If you want to do it faster, you can hold down Z, and then whatever you're hovering on when you let go of it, it'll go to that. And then you can actually do it faster than it pops up. So you can just uh, you know tap Z and move the mouse, and it'll swipe over. So you can get really fast with it. That's what I'm doing when that happens that fast. So if you're if you're wondering, um, but you can also just click up here on the top right if that works for you too. So um, back to this little capsule thing. Oh, also we need to name it. So this first fin will name ray gun fin, and the cylinder I will name ray gun top capsule. The names might get a little weird because, like, I don't know what this thing is called. Um, I think I called it dangly bit in my other version. Or, no, I called it the underneath pokey bit. So, as long as it's descriptive and you know what it is, that's all that matters. So, we'll scale it down to roughly the thickness of the capsule. You'll see that it's not perfectly level, so I'm just going to ignore that and use it as a general guide. And then we'll go into vertex mode. I'll select this, and we'll move it out to there. I'll select this and move that out to about here. And then I'm going to extrude that. Hit uh, X to make sure it's staying on the X axis. I'll go to about there and I'll scale it down so we get that taper. Um, that's all I'm going to do for that. I know there's more detail to be added, but we'll come back to that. Again, this is just about kind of blocking everything in. Um... Let's not worry about these bits for now. Let's move on to the handle. So we'll start with the actual handle here. And I think for ease of topology, um, you could use a cylinder. And if we look at this image here, you can see at, at first I thought it was like two pieces clamped around the frame, but it's actually its own piece. Um, you could use a cylinder. We're going to use a cube, though. Because uh, once we smooth out a cube, it's going to work pretty well. So uh, that's what we'll use. I'm going to shift right click to put the 3D cursor right in the center there. Shift A, add in a cube. And here I want to rotate this in object mode. Um, that way, as I'm moving things around, I'll be able to use them use the object normal, which will make sense a little bit later. So I've added that. Uh, all the defaults here are fine. And I'm going to, uh, actually, we can bring that size down now. Okay. So I'll move it to, or in edit mode. All right, I'm going to hit A to make sure I have everything selected. I'm going to wireframe here. Uh, I'm going to, let's see, what do I want to do first? I think, actually, I'll, I'll go back into object mode. I'm going to rotate it in object mode, kind of line that up. There is a taper, so it's kind of, I'm just looking at these uh, red kind of lines and lining that up, so that looks pretty good. Good enough, anyway. So now we can go back into edit mode. And I'm going to right click and subdivide. And it gives me this option for number of cuts. I'm going to first bring the smoothness up to one. And I'm going to bump up the number of cuts, uh, I think, to um, we could probably do either. I'm going to, we'll leave it at two for now. That should be enough. OK. And then here's why I wanted to rotate it in. Um, actually, before we do that, let's let's scale it down a little bit more. Okay, so those ends are meeting. 
So here's why I wanted to rotate it in object mode. Uh, I want to select just the bottom half of these vertices. So I'm going to double tap A. That's going to deselect everything. And then I'm going to hit C to bring up my circle select tool. So I'm going to just left click and drag with my circle select tool across all the vertices to select them all. Uh, you can use the scroll wheel to change the size of your selection. All right, you can middle click and drag to deselect. And then once you have the selection you want, you can right click to get right, get out of that tool. Um, you can also, if you click on the little active tool properties uh, and bring up C, you should be able to change, I guess not, I thought you could change the size there. It doesn't really show you unless you actually select the tool and then you can change the radius. <clears throat> But scroll wheel is the, the faster way to do that. Uh, now I want to move this down to the base. So I'm going to hit G. Uh, oh, not that. So G, and then I want to move it in the Z direction. But I want to move it along the object normal. When that, what that means is the object's own Z direction. So because we rotated it in object mode, the object thinks Z is now in this direction. So by double tapping Z, it's going to move it in the normal, or, the, or actually it's the local Z direction. Okay, and it's going to keep it in line. So again, I'm going to I'll use the circle select, select all my vertices. And I'm doing this in wireframe so that I select both sides of it. Okay, that's important. And then I'm going to hit G to move it. And I'm going to double tap Z to move it in the local direction. And it's this is only working because I rotated it in object mode. Okay, if I hit N and bring up my item uh, properties and go into object mode, you can see that the rotation is there. So it knows that that I've rotated it 20 degrees, and it's thinking that the Z axis is now 20 degrees off when I go in the local direction. And to hide that back into edit mode. Uh, now I need to scale this down a little bit, so just with this half selected, I'm going to scale it. And G, Z, Z again. Move that up. In the bottom here, I'm just left clicking and dragging across. Uh, and I'm going to scale that up a little bit too, to the proper width. And then I want to make it... I need to scale it down in the Z direction. So it's if I hit scale and then Z, Z again, now I can change kind of the how extreme that curve is. I just want to scale that down a little bit, flatten it out a little bit. Okay? And then I can move it in the local direction again. Okay, now I'll do the same thing up here. So select it all, S to scale, Z. Z, so hit Z twice, scale in the local Z and flatten that out just a little bit. And then I can move it back up a little bit. Okay. So that is that handle. Um, the last thing that I want to do is just going to help set us up for this handle frame. So I'm going to add in an edge loop here in the center. And I'm going to right click and I'm just going to keep that in the center. Um, because it's a relatively flat edge loop, and that's going to make things a little bit easier for me. Uh, and I want to add in one more edge loop. I'm going to line it up at the top of this red band. We'll add more when we actually want to define these insets, but that'll be later. So Control r to add an edge loop. I'm going to left click to confirm one. Now you see as this slides, when it gets closer to this flat edge, it flattens out. When it gets closer to this edge, it, it kind of assumes that shape. I want this to stay flat, but also move it in this direction. Uh, and so we're going to use uh, an additional option here in this edge slide. If we look up here on the top left, you can see it says edge slide minus one. And this is E uh, in parentheses, even off, and then alt or clamp on. So even off is what we want to pay attention to. Uh, if I hit E, while I'm still in edge slide mode, you can see this this edge turns yellow. And then we've got this little red dot. And it's telling us that right now, no matter where I slide it, it's going to stay even 
with the, this side of it, with this edge. If I, you can see now I've got this flipped option. If I hit F, it will flip it to the other edge, and it'll stay even with the other edge no matter where I move it. This will be, this will come in handy uh, quite a bit as we go through this. Um, if you forget, you can always just look in the top left, and it will remind you what the shortcuts are, what the options are. Okay, so I'll just I'll go through that again real quick. Uh, control or Command R to add an edge loop. Left click to confirm, and slide it around. I'm going to E to keep it even, and it's already even with the the edge that I want. So now I can just slide it into place, and left click to confirm it. Uh, and that is just about all that I need to do. Uh, I will do a, another one down here at the bottom because I'll need to do it eventually anyway. So control R, left click, hit E to keep it even. And in this case, I need to hit F to flip it and I'll line it up right there. And that is gonna be it for this. Now we just need to do some naming. So this is going to be uh, ray gun grip. And that's it for that piece. So now we can move on to a much more uh, tricky piece where edge flow is going to become important, and that's going to be this little frame. Next part, um, I'm going to be a little bit more mindful of where we're placing the edges because, you know, up until now, everything has been pretty straightforward as far as what is the primitive that we're going to use to establish the shape. With this piece, it's not quite so obvious. Um, and there's one principle that I really want to pay attention to, and that's going to be keeping edge loops and face loops around the main forms. Um, so if I pull up a just a reference so you can kind of see. Oh, this was an in-progress one. And it won't be the final topology. But we do have, we've got a face loop that goes all the way around here. And we have this face loop that goes and covers the top here. This one's going to go all the way up, and then we have a face loop that goes all the way around this circle. Okay. Those are the main ones. Uh, one, hopefully ours will be a little bit smoother than this, um, but that's what we're, we're going for. So this time, instead of starting with a plane, which we could do, or we could start with a circle, there's a number of different ways we could do this, uh, I'm actually going to start with this grip. So I'm going to go back into edit mode on this grip, and I'm going to alt left click on this edge loop okay so if we go to the side view you can see it's there's not an edge that goes down the center it's the one just left of center just on the front side okay this is what we're going to use as a starting point for this next piece I'm going to hit shift D to duplicate it all right so I've got my own copy I'm going to right click to keep it in the same spot and then I'm going to hit P to separate it by selection. All right, separate selection. You can also get to that if you just go to the mesh uh, menu, and then separate is right here. Okay. If you forget uh, where any of that is, you can hit F3 to bring up your search. And then if you start typing in separate, you'll see mesh separate, and you'll see the shortcut for it right there. Okay. That's F3 to bring up the search. So once I have that, I can tab into object mode. I'm going to hide my original grip. Okay. And then just with this copy, first we can rename it. I'm going to call this Raygun Grip underscore frame, for lack of a better term. And I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. Okay. So there's a lot of kind of tricky bits here that we need to define one bit at a time. Uh, so we will start with getting rid of all the stuff that we don't need. So if I bring up my circle select tools which with C, I'm gonna left click and drag and all of these vertices I don't need. So I'll select those, right click, and then I'm just gonna hit X and delete those vertices. I'm keeping this one at the bottom because this is gonna work for this part here and I'm keeping this one up here. I'm going to select this uh, little um, middle vertex. I'm going to slide that up so that it's right here at this point. So I'm going to just double tap G to 
enter edge or vertex slide, and I'll move it right up to there. Okay. And then we have, if I go into edge mode, I have this one edge here that I don't need. So I'm going to select just that edge. I'm going to hit X, and I'm going to delete that edge. Uh, now we can actually start doing some modeling here. We'll start at the bottom because this is going to be probably the easier part. I'm going to, again, I'm going to stay in front view. Hit 1 to go into vertex select. And I don't want to move these vertices because they're, I already know they're perfectly lined up with my grip. So I'm just going to keep them there. Um, but I'm going to select these. I'm going to hit E to extrude. And I'm going to move them out to about here. Well, actually, we'll move it all the way down to here, right before the curve starts. I'm going to go into wireframe. And I want this to stay even. So, again, it's not perfectly lining up with the, with the reference. So maybe what we can do is we can select these bottom two vertices. And if I double tap G, it'll slide that whole edge up. Okay, that'll just keep it in line. Uh, and I'm going to move this vertex down. Again, I'm going to double tap G to keep sliding it. And I want to line it up here because this, this is like the top, so it's just this front face that we want to worry about. And then we'll add in another edge loop. We'll slide it over here to right at the where this curve starts. And I'll slide this down, double tap G. Okay. And then we need one or two more edges in here. So we can go two, and again, just double tap G to slide them down. Okay, so that's all we need to do to define that. Now what we need to do is turn this corner. And I want to keep this thickness the same, so I don't want to scale these at all. And if I rotate anything, or if I move it, I want to move them as pairs, so that, that this distance between the two vertices stays the same. So I'm going to hit E to extrude, and I'll move it out a little bit, and then I'm going to rotate them again, selecting them together. I'll rotate them so that thickness stays the same. And I'm going to do like three different extrusions around this corner, or actually four. So that's the first one. I'll do it again. So this is going to go right about here. I'm going to rotate it, and I'm looking at looking for it to be perpendicular to the curve. Okay, so if the curve is going this way, I want to be 90 degrees to that. And I'll do this a couple more times. So extrude it, rotate it a little bit, extrude it, and rotate a little bit. And this is going to be, this last one is going to be wherever that curve starts, or stops, right? So where it moves into the straight piece. Uh, and then... Again, we want to keep things relatively even. So now I can see that I need to move this one around a little bit. So I'm going to hit G to move it a little bit more. And we can rotate that. Same thing here. G to move it. And rotate that a little bit. And then same thing here. So G. And we'll rotate that back a little bit. Okay? So I, we're, in, we're using the same tools that we always have. Right? There's nothing new happening here. Um, it's just using them in a very deliberate way. Easy. I'm going to select these two end vertices and extrude them all the way down to here. Okay. And then I will extrude this. Actually, we can move those to right up where this curve starts. And then I'll extrude it a little bit more. We will rotate it a little bit. Move that back a little bit. Extrude it again, rotate it a little bit, and then extrude it one last time to here. I'm going to rotate it so it's perpendicular with the main body, and I'll select this top edge and double tap G to move it down. Um, the top of this part, will we're not going to perfectly follow the reference, um, just for clarity's sake, and we can always tweak it later once we get the parts more fully fleshed out. Of a even faster way to do this. So if I undo this a little bit, um, if you control right click, it will automatically extrude and rotate to wherever your mouse is. 
So this can be a very fast way to kind of flush out these forms. Uh, it'll usually still need some adjustment, but for just quickly defining these forms, it will do a pretty good job of getting them there. Um, so we can do that and then still do a little bit more tweaking here, but it's a nice thing for especially the beginning part of this of, of blocking things in. Um, I'm going to take this top vertex and I'm going to line this up at the top. Okay, just because that's going to make sense for the edge flow later on. I'm less concerned about consistent width here um, than I am down here. So we will do that. Okay. And I'm going to add another edge loop right here. Um, that'll become handy a little bit later. Actually, so will that one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's let's jump around a little bit. You see, this is what we have so far. And I can turn off my reference layer just so you can see what we have. Um, let's focus on all of these vertices. So for this, again, I don't want to move these vertices because they're already lined up with the grip perfectly. That's why we started with the grip uh, itself. But I'm going to hit E to extrude them. And then I'm going to right click. And that's going to keep them in the same spot. That extrusion is still there. Um, you can It can be a little bit troublesome when you don't remember that you've extruded and the, the vertices are still there. But they are still there. Uh, and I'm just going to hit S to scale them. And I want to scale them up a little bit. Something like that will be fine. Okay, so now I have a face loop that goes around the grip, okay? But I need to make some adjustments. So I'll select this vertex here. I'm gonna go back into to wireframe because it's a little bit easier for me to see. And I'm gonna move this up to here. And I'm gonna grab this one and we'll go about to there. Mm. Yeah, I think we'll do we're gonna do about that. Um, kind of move this over and straighten this out a little bit. The big thing, like I'm, a lot of these vertices, I'm not lining up with anything in particular. At least a lot of these kind of outside ones. It's just making them even and smooth. Um, and I'll be kind of continually tweaking these as we go. I've defined that main form. Uh, we can kind of fill this in here real quick. So for that, uh, I'm going to take this one. Let's, let's think about this real quick. We'll take these two edges, and I'll extrude those out. And then I can take this vertex and move that there. This one, let's see. Do like that, I think. Yeah, that's gonna work. Okay, so we have this kind of little um, greater than sign sort of thing, or Pac-Man esque shape. Uh, I'm gonna select just this one vertex, and I'm gonna extrude that out. So E to extrude, and I just changed my mind immediately. I'm gonna undo that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to undo that. Let's do this instead. Uh, I'm going to move this vertex down. I'm just going to like leave a little edge there. I'm going to move this one down a little bit. And this one over here. I think we'll do something like this be a little bit better. Kind of a tricky shape, so I'm going to delete this face. That's getting in the way. And then I'm going to bra uh, drag this one down a little bit. Then I can drag this one over and this one over. And then I can select this edge and bring that out to there. Okay. 
So that's that's. I, take this one, right? Drag it down, and this is the form that you get. It's a pretty simplified form, but that's enough to define the shapes that we need. Uh, let's take care of this form down here. All right, that's going to flow along the top of this cutout. So I'm going to want one more edge loop here. Something like that should be good. And I'm just going to select, you can either select these two vertices or just select the edge. Again, it's the exact same thing. And we can do our uh, control right click here. And we'll go out across a few times. It's right about there. And then when we get to here, I'm going to select this edge and this edge. Right click and bridge the edge loops. Okay. Once we have that, we go into vertex mode and start moving these around. So I'll move that one here. I'm just going to worry about the bottom side of this first. Kind of even these out. Something like that. This can go over here. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Uh, I'm just, again, just to keep these relatively square. Uh, I'm also going to move this down. I don't want it to skirt the edge of the cutout for the circle. That's going to be a separate form. Okay. So that should be pretty good. I'm going to select these two uh, edges and just double tap G, or these two vertices. And I'm going to slide it down a little bit. Um, and then... Let's see what we got going on here. I'm going to add one edge loop in here. And I'll probably get rid of this one. So I'm going to hit X and dissolve edges. And we can kind of just redefine this a little bit. Because that'll be, that's enough detail. We don't need any more than that. Okay. Uh, now what we need to do is we're going to fill this in, and then we're going to cut the hole out. All right. So I'm going to go to edge mode, and I'm going to select this edge and this edge. I'm going to extrude it across. Uh, I'll get it most of the way there, and then I'm going to bridge that with these two edges. Right click, bridge edge loops. And then you can see we need to connect it down here. So we've got this edge is going to continue down, so that's good. But we need three more edge loops here. So control R, scroll to three, and we can just keep them evenly spaced. And now, let me select these edges and these edges and bridge those. Okay. And then up at the top here, I'm going to select just these center three edges. Right? These up. Again, this is going to be the defining that top line. And we have this face here that we can fill in. I'm going to hide this reference image for a minute just so we can maybe see this a little bit better. So I'm going to select these two edges. And then if you hit F, it will fill it in. Okay, and then on this side, uh, again, we want to make sure that we stay in, in all quads here. So, let me see what we got going on. This is going to be the kind of the, the tricky part here. Um, so I just took this vertex and I just moved it up here, which is ugly and I hate it. Um, so let's, we might come back to that, but for now I'm going to select these two vertices. I'm going to hit F to, f to bridge them or, or create a, uh, an edge between the two. And I'm going to right click and subdivide that once. So now this is a quad, right? Now it's four sides. And then I can select the two opposite edges and hit F to fill that in. Okay. So now that's all quads. Um, that's going to change here once we add in our hole. Um, and that's, uh, that's next. 
So we are ready to make this circle. I'm going to go into wireframe here. And I'm going to make the circle out of these six faces. Um, and first, what I want to do is I'm going to hit... Uh, I'm going to hit I, and I'm going to inset them just a little bit. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that yet. Sorry. <laughs> Immediately changed my mind. Um, I want to... I'm going to do one new thing. There is one new thing that I haven't showed you yet. And that's going to require an add-on for Blender. That is, it's already bundled with it. All you have to do is enable it, enable it, and that's called Loop Tools. So if I go to Edit, Preferences, and go to Add-ons, and you just search Loop, okay, Mesh Loop Tools. Just check that box. It's all you have to do. It'll automatically enable, and you're good. Okay? that it enables a, a number of different kind of um, quality of life up, upgrades to, to modeling um, but it does one very important thing and that is gives us a circle option so with these faces selected if I right click I now have this loop tools menu and it's got a few different functions but the important one here is circle and I guess to my knowledge I'm not aware of it in the blender 2.8 update that it has it built in. If it does, I'd love to hear about it, but um, loop tools circle. I click on that and it's going to turn whatever I had selected into a circle, into a perfect circle. So in this case, it's like an eight sided or it's a 10 sided circle. Um, I'm going to hit X and delete those faces because obviously we need the hole in the mesh. I have that. I'm not going to line it up perfectly with the reference image because um, it's going to get a little bit cramped with the edges and it doesn't really matter all that much. Um, but I'm going to position it roughly there. And... Actually, we'll, we'll scale this up a little bit. And then I'm going to extrude it, right-click to keep it in the spot, and just scale it down a little bit. So now I have this really nice face loop around my object. Um, the last thing to do with this is just to kind of even out all of this weirdness. So I'll select these two and I'm going to double tap G to slide them down. I'm going to move this one down a little bit. Um, we can look at, well, we'll come back to this area, but that's going to need a little bit of work. Uh, we'll move this one around a little bit. Again, just evening things out. I'm going to move this one over. Move this one over a little bit. These need to come down. Okay. That one. Adjustment down here, because I want to define this curve a little bit better. I'm going to slide this up. I'm going to slide this up. I'm going to add one more edge loop here. This way I'll get a little bit better curve right there. Slide this one up a little bit too. All right, we want to try to keep these as, as smooth and even as possible. And then we have this uh, just travesty, really. It's the only word I can think of. Um, so we need to fix that. A little bit of rearranging here. I apologize for that, but that's kind of part of the process. I'm going to select some faces. Specifically these, and these, I think that one too, no that one can stay. We'll start with these. I'm going to delete these three faces, okay. And then I'm going to select this face loop, and we'll scale that up a bit. Okay. Now, this inner ring, I want to keep this a circle, so I'm not going to touch any of those vertices. But this outer ring, I will adjust and move, and again, just kind of even things out a little bit. Keep it 
relatively smooth. So I'm going to move this one up. I'm going to delete these faces as well. I don't need them. I can just move these vertices up instead. Okay. I can move this one up as well. Okay, so now we've got a straight line, roughly straight line across. Um, whoops. And I just want to grab that one. I'll move that up. I'll move this one up a little bit. There we go. That's feeling much better. I can kind of move this one up as well. I, I don't want these to be too kind of elongated, too stretched out. But I also don't want to add any more edge loops. So it's a bit of a give and take there. Um, you certainly could add a bunch of edge loops like in through here and then select this and make it a circle again. But that's a little bit more edge loops than we need. So we're going we're gonna to keep it pretty simple here. Um, once I have that, let's even this out a little bit more. I think we're going to be pretty good from here. This is a little bit stretched and I don't love that, but you can always select this and we'll rotate it a little bit to relieve some of the angle. Maybe scale it up a little bit too. Okay. Uh, and I think we'll leave it there. As far as geometry, the last thing we need to do is the same thing we did with the fin. And that's going to be to uh, make this three-dimensional. So first, we're going to go into side view, and we're going to notice that this isn't perfectly flat. Um, and that's just because the way that the handle was made, it wasn't perfectly flat. So I'm going to just select everything, and I'm going to scale it along the y-axis to zero. So S, Y, zero. Just going to flatten everything out in that direction. See from the front view, it's still good. But now it's perfectly planar from the side. Um, also, this top edge, I'm going to I'm going to scale it along the z-axis to zero, s z zero. It's going to flatten it out, make it a, a straight line, and then I'll rotate it and move it back into position, just so that everything is nicely lined up. Okay, once I have that, then we can add our mirror modifier to it. So add modifier mirror, same thing we do with the fin. We want to set this in the Y direction, not the X direction. Turn on clipping. And then I'm going to select all of the edges around the perimeter. So it's going to be this edge. And I'm just holding down uh, Alt and Shift and clicking on all of these border edges. Don't forget these little guys up here. They're easy to forget. Okay, once I have them all selected, hit E to extrude them, and Y to limit to the Y direction, and go into the center so everything snaps together. Okay, so I have that. I'll go back into my front view here. Um, you see I still have some distortion here that I don't like a lot. I think it's actually pretty terrible. Um, so I can go to wireframe still and I want to click and drag it across. If I just left click to select one vertex, um, there's now a... Oh, I didn't grab that edge. <laughs> there should be a center vertex, so actually I should have Make sure we extrude that one as well. There we go. Um, but from the front view, if we just left click to select one vertex, you can see that it didn't select that middle one. So we need to make sure we select them both. So wireframe, click and drag across, or 
select the, both edge loops. Uh, I'm going to just scale it up a little bit more. We'll move it up a little bit. And try to even this out a little bit more. I don't want to spend too much time just because you don't need to sit there and watch me push individual vertices around. I think you get the idea. We're just going for smooth, even edge flow. All quads. Not too much distortion here. As much as we can avoid it. Select this one and just double tap G to slide it. Slide that one as well. And that'll that'll work. So just uh, this is a, a great illustration why we went through all this trouble instead of doing something like Boolean, which certainly will get the same shape. Um, th one of the next steps is going to be to add a subsurface subdivision surface modifier. And what that does is it smooths everything out. Um, so we get nice clean lines and you right click and you go to shade smooth um, this right here is a little normals issue so I select everything go to mesh uh, normals recalculate outside that goes away um, but as we're, we're working this now we have the smooth surface but it's a little bit too soft looking all right and so the way that you fix that and I'll go over this in more detail um, next week when we actually start detailing uh, and, and refining these shapes. Uh, but the way that you kind of fix this softness is you start adding some edge loops and I'll make them even and line them up. So we went through all this trouble so that when we do add these edge loops we get the edges that follow the forms exactly where we need them. And so we have all of the control that we need for our shapes. So that's that's why we went through all of that hassle um, instead of any of the other ways that you can do it. It's not to say that there still aren't other ways that you can do this, but um, yeah, that's why edge flow uh, is an important thing. But I'll undo all of that for now. We don't need to worry about that. There we go. Okay. Before we move on to the next bit, uh, I've been reminded that I haven't saved, so we should do that. Uh, Command Shift S, and I'm going to get out of this view. Let's do a vertical list, uh, and I'm going to save this one as Raygun instead of Prep. We'll call this. I'll call this demo. You can just call yours Raygun Zero One Blocking, or whatever else makes sense. Again, I like this naming convention because as I, it, it tells me what the file is. It tells me what kind of step in the process it is and then a little description of what that step is. So you see number two is refining the forms, number three would be details, number four might be materials, you know, things like that. This keeps it progressive. So uh, I will do that and I will click save and now I have it saved. Okay, um, let's move on and get some more interesting forms going on. I think, so the point here is just to kind of block in all the main forms. Um, let's I'm going to ignore these two little bits and we'll go back to this main body and let's add in some details here um, or, or just kind of finish blocking these ends and kind of it blurs the line between blocking and, and modeling um, it's kind of a fluid process but I wanted to start with the blocking if you weren't using reference um, now is a kind of a great time to just take a step back, look at what you have, and figure out if it is the right size and the right proportion for what you're going for. So now we can we can kind of we start to get a sense of what this is going to look like. Uh, we can decide uh, is this fin too large? Do I want it to have a different shape? Do I want it to kind of swoop up? Um, is the thickness right? You know, do we want this arch to be a little bit more extreme? Um, and in order to make these adjustments, like we don't have a lot of detail here. So it's very easy to make the adjustments now versus later on when we have a whole lot more geometry going on. So that's part of the reason why, why we go through the blocking first and then move into details. Um, just kind of helps establish the scene and, and gives you an idea of, of how things are going to um, 
be positioned in relation to each other and how they're going to interact. So, but now let's let's jump into this ray gun body here. I will go into wireframe. I'll turn my reference images back on, and let's start with. Um, doesn't really matter. We'll start with these fins or the the kind of this detail right here. So uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to define the edges of this. So I'm going to add one edge loop right here. I'll scale it down. Whoops. There we go. Just right there. Okay. So now these edges are defining the kind of outer limits of this detail. So it's the edge of the red to the edge of the red. And then what we can do is we're going to add a bunch more edge loops. And actually, before I do that, we can count. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 edge loops. All right, so Control R. I use the scroll wheel to go all the way up to 8. Um, you'll notice down in the bottom left of the screen, it says number of cuts, 6. We keep scrolling to 8. You can also type in 8. But you can see once you get to the right number, the edge loops should kind of automatically border everything. Oops. Uh, yeah, is that is that right? Looks right there, there, there. That doesn't look right at all. No, it should be good. Okay. Um, now. I'm going to go into face mode. Oh, I see I see what's happening. It's because I'm lining it up up here and not down here. That's why these are misaligned. Um, so I'm going to go into face mode, and I'm going to select every other face loop. Okay, so we should have four face loops. Again, that's Alt or Option, left click. We'll select a face loop. And you want to click on the perpendicular edge. Okay, so Alt, left click, and then hold down Shift and Alt, and you can select the other ones hit E to extrude them and then I don't want to actually extrude them in this direction so I'm going to right click after I've extruded again that extrusion is still there you can tell because you see these little face dots on the edges here that means that there's faces there um, so now I can hit S to scale and I don't want to scale in the X direction I want to hit shift X to exclude the X direction so it only scales in the Y and the Z because I don't want the thickness to change. I just want the radius to change. Okay, so I'm going to scale it up. And I'm going to scale it just so this first one lines up, and then I'm going to go back and make the adjustments. Okay, uh, but if we go into solid view, you can see we're already, we've more or less defined it, but now we just need to get the edges in the right spot. So go back to wireframe. I'm going to go into vertex mode. And... Um, this might look a little bit confusing on the screen. I'm going to try to help make that make sense. Maybe we'll go to solid so it's a little bit less confusing. Um, and we're just going to kind of manually scale them down so that everything lines up. You see that this one went a little bit too far, so we'll scale that way down. Uh, and it doesn't have to be exact, and it's, you can kind of you can make a choice as, as far as what this actually looks like. If you want these to be scaled the same size, you could do that. So we could we could select this edge loop here, and I can scale it down so that this top edge is flat. Okay, that's one option. Or if you wanted them to all be at an angle, you could do it that way too. So you could decide that maybe I want them to move up. Uh, maybe two two squares over the course of it. So I might select this edge here, and I'll scale it down to one line, to this line right here, and I'll select this edge, and I'll scale it up to that line, right? To, to two squares up, right? So if I do that there, I can do the same thing here, and whoop, and I can make that kind of consistent choice. doesn't 
really matter either way. It's all just what looks good to your eye. All right, so I'll scale this down. And I'm, I am trying to keep this kind of continuous line. Um, but this isn't CAD or anything, so it doesn't have to be machine perfect. It just needs to ultimately just needs to look good and have clean edge flow. That's all we're going for here. Okay. And again, make sure you're selecting the whole the whole edge loop. So if you need to kind of select it and orbit around it, just to make sure you have the right selection, that's okay. So once I have that, uh, we can look at these inner bits and go back into face mode. And we kind of do the same thing and maybe scale these down. Alright, so maybe I'll take... That one actually looks pretty good. Um, it's just this, this last one that I don't love. Actually, it's a couple of them I don't love. So, I'll select this one. I'll just scale it down a little bit. I'll select this face loop. We can scale that down. Again, I should also hit Shift X to only scale it in the Y and the Z direction. Okay, because we don't want it. We don't want it to scale like that. Okay, so if we just scale it normally, you can see that how it gets wider and in, in the skinnier. So, scale Shift X to stop that from happening. bring those into line a little bit more. Oops, S shift X, there we go. And then this last one, let's actually I'm just gonna take a take a moment and look at it in a, a solid view. And kind of see how it's looking, make sure that I still like the form. Again, we're not tied to this reference image. If we decide we want it to look different, we can make that happen. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so for this for this last little bit, we're actually we're gonna need to add one more edge loop. So I'm gonna select this edge loop right here, and I'm gonna scale it down. Oops, there we go. I'm gonna scale it down, and then I need to add one more edge loop. I'm gonna slide it all the way to the left. And then I'm going to scale it down. And that's going to give me this vertical face here and give me the shape that I want. And then we'll select this edge loop. I'll scale that down. Again, I'm just kind of, at this point, just kind of eyeballing it. Um, I could probably have done better with the with the lining it up so I didn't have to do all of this, but that's okay. You know, maybe we want this inside kind of red part to have more of an arc and not have a straight line. So we can start to bring some of that in here where we make this smaller. And then make it a little bit flatter towards the back. And it's a lot of kind of selecting and then going back to the front view. Making sure we're getting the form that we want. And so we'll, we'll basically be doing the same thing on the back. It works the same way. We just kind of define the outside edges or the kind of e the extremes of your shape. And then you can add a bunch of edge loops in the middle to define each cut. Go from there. And then this one. Oops, there we go. There we go. So I've got more of a kind of an arc here versus more of a straight line here. Although that one 
isn't exactly right. It's better. Okay. So there's that. Um, I do want to, before it gets too late, I do want to address the caps of these cylinders, as I've said I would. Um, we want to make sure that these are all quads, because otherwise we get that weird pinching that I showed right at the beginning of this video. Uh, so I'm going to go into side view, three on the number pad, and I need to turn this into quads. And the easiest way is going to be to use the knife tool. Uh, it is located here on the left. Um, but you can see the shortcut is shift, shift spacebar. Oh, because that brings this up. And you can get to the knife tool here, you get all of your tools. Um, I'm just going to use K. It's going to just bring it, bring that knife tool up real quick. And I'm going to use this to draw out my quads. So I'm going to connect the top and the bottom here. And you can see when I f find a vertex, the square turns green and it has this red highlight around it. I want to make sure that I'm snapping to the vertices. I'm going to click on that. And then once I have that edge that I want, I can hit return. And I can do it again. OK, and hit return. And I'm going to connect those three. OK, so those three edges. I've got two quads here. But now I need one more edge loop or one more edge straight across. I do this, hit return. And now. All these faces are quads, and things are going to just work better. Um, and then I'll do that same thing on the back side here. So I'm going to select this face. I'm going to hit Control 3 on the number pad, and that's going to go into my left side view. You can also use either the widgets up here or the tilde key and left side view. That all works. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit K. I'm going to draw here to here. And then instead of hitting return right away, I can hit control. Uh, is it, let's see, what is it? There's one. Oh, it's, I think it's C. Uh, i got to remember what the shortcut is. It's not C. It is E. If I hit E, I can start a new cut. So connect these, hit E, start a new cut. And then at the end, I can hit return and all those cuts will be made. So now I have all quads and that makes me happy. So that's gonna be it for kind of blocking this in. Um, I guess one last little thing, and I won't do the whole thing, but just so you can see it, this little extended bit is just gonna be a series of extrusions. So select, all, select them all, extrude, select it, extrude it a little bit, scale it down, and just kind of so on and so forth down the line. Um, here I might extrude, right click to keep it in the same spot, and then just scale it. You could also inset, that would actually be this, the exact same uh, operation. Extrude it all the way down, scale it down, and extrude it once more, scale it up, maybe move it over a little, little bit. Um, maybe I'll extrude it all the way down to the bottom, or to the end, and then you can go back and add the edge loops back in. Either way works, um, but it's just extruding in edge loops, and that's how you get the forms that you need. And then once you're, I'll save this, um, as you continue doing that, then you can get to roughly this form. So there's not really anything new happening here. I just, because I wasn't recording at this time, I took a little bit more time to get things right, but it's just simple extrusions all the way down. And you can see I never connected those faces. I should I should use the knife tool over there. Um, I didn't do it on either of those. Shame on me. I did it up here, though. So this top capsule is the same thing. Um, not really anything new in any of these spots. So should be all straightforward from there. And for reference, here's a quick wireframe of, of what I have for blocking. Um, this changed a little bit from what I just made and isn't the final version as far as this edge flow, but it does work. Um, but yeah, this is that's all the edges that are there, and it's probably even more than I necessarily need, but it's pretty close.